You know, there's a certain beauty to consoles. A singular box you buy, you plug it into a TV, any TV, and simply play games. Even as members of the PC Master Race, we have to acknowledge that that idea is attractive. But PC gamers also know the weaknesses of the console experience. The simplicity of an Xbox or PlayStation goes hand in hand with a lack of options to customize your gaming experience. On PC, there are a million and one ways to do just that. From the actual components in your gaming machine to the peripherals you use to interact with it, mice, keyboard, headsets, monitors, they can all drastically change how it feels to play games. This video is the first in a series where we'll focus on one specific aspect of the gaming experience and how changing it can change everything. And we're starting with refresh rate. Asus has sent us some fantastic gaming monitors, so we're going to talk about why you might want a 60 or 120 or 144 or 240 hertz monitor, what graphics cards you might need to power them, and at the end of the day, whether all this is that much different from a console experience. Let's begin. With all the advances in home Wi-Fi tech that we've seen in the past few years, using the combo modem and router you got from your internet provider is limiting yourself. Upgrading to a new TP-Link tri-band router is easier than ever thanks to the new TP-Link Tether app. Tri-band routers provide more lanes for Wi-Fi traffic, and TP-Link's Smart Connect feature assigns your devices to the band that works best for them. See how the TP-Link Archer C5400 tri-band router boosted the McNeil's Wi-Fi performance and coverage by clicking the link in the corner or the description. Now before we get too deep, let's quickly talk about what refresh rate is. Refresh rate is how many times per second your display can refresh the on-screen image, measured in hertz. This is different than frames per second, which refers to how fast your GPU can output images to the display. So your GPU might be making 100 frames every second, but if your display only has a 60 hertz refresh rate, it will only show 60 of those, or as close as it can to that, per second. Now one thing that can happen in that scenario is screen tearing. The monitor tries to show two frames at once and ends up showing part of both. One solution to screen tearing is VSync, which locks the frame rate to the refresh rate of your monitor, but that can lead to input lag, a delay between when you press a button and when its intended action shows up on screen. So you end up choosing either tearing or lag. AMD and Nvidia solve this problem with their own variable refresh rate technologies. AMD's FreeSync and NVIDIA's G-Sync dynamically change the monitor's refresh rate to match up with the frames coming from the GPU, so you don't get tearing or significant input lag. The catch is, you need a monitor compatible with either FreeSync or G-Sync to take advantage of this. There aren't really any monitors out there that can do both, not that I could find anyways. FreeSync and G-Sync also usually have a range of FPS values that they work within on a given monitor. One other thing to note is that the higher your FPS and refresh rate, the less noticeable tearing will be. You might get tearing with an FPS of 200 on a 144 hertz monitor, but it might be so minimal it's not really an issue. So now we know a bit more about refresh rate and FPS, so let's talk about gaming scenarios in which high refresh rates would be the most useful. Obviously, the higher your FPS, the better. But not everyone has the budget or the need to go all out on a GTX 1080 Ti and a 240Hz monitor. High refresh rates are the most useful for fast-paced games with a lot of rapid view switching, like first-person shooters, third-person action games, and racing games. Games with slow or largely unchanging viewpoints, like MOBAs, strategy games, or slower narrative-driven games, won't benefit as much from frame rates higher than 60fps. Now, I know there's going to be comments, so I want to reiterate here that I'm not saying playing Dota 2 won't be better at 240Hz. I'm saying you'll notice less of a change and will receive less of a benefit to your actual gameplay than if you were playing Counter-Strike or Overwatch. It's important, then, to pick a graphics card and monitor that suit your use cases the best. If you have a set budget, you should get the best product you can within that budget. But if you're running a lower-end gaming card like a GTX 1050, you're not going to make anywhere close to full use of a 240Hz monitor, so you might as well save some money and not set your budget around that high-end part while you still have that low-end part you're working with. Likewise, a super powerful GPU like a 1080 Ti may not actually afford you any real benefit FPS-wise if your 60Hz monitor is incapable of taking advantage of that power. 
And like we discussed, you might even get screen tearing that could make your gaming experience worse. Now, with that said, we can talk about specific recommendations for monitors and what graphics cards you might want to pair with them. If you're an FPS junkie, you'd probably be best served with a 120 or 144 hertz monitor, and anything from an RX 580 or GTX 1070 and up, assuming we're talking about 1080p in high settings. 240 hertz monitors exist. In fact, this is one right here, the ASUS PG258Q. But as refresh rates get higher, the increase in smoothness gets less noticeable. We did a subjective test of whether people here at NCIX could tell the difference between 144 hertz and 240 hertz, and about a quarter of our test subjects correctly identified the 240 hertz monitor. Now, we didn't have the most scientifically robust test design, but it seemed like the people who could tell the difference were frequent gamers. So if you want even more of an edge over competitors than a 144Hz monitor can provide, consider a 240Hz display like this one. And you likely won't even experience tearing either, even without G-Sync, unless your frame rate goes over 240Hz. Now, if you don't play many FPS games, the advantages of a 144 or 240Hz monitor are diminished. Like I said, they may improve your gaming experience, and they probably would, yes. But if you're playing games like Dota 2, League of Legends, StarCraft, or even slower third-person narrative-driven games, 120 or even 60 hertz monitors may just do you fine. MOBAs and RTS games can usually run on pretty modest hardware, and some FPS games like Overwatch and CSGO can too, so you'd be alright with a Radeon 560, GTX 1050, or even integrated graphics depending on your CPU and how low of a frame rate you're willing to accept. Now, in this video, we did not factor in resolution, in-game graphics settings, and all that stuff. We'll be talking about that in later episodes. But for now, I hope this video clarified some issues about refresh rate, because now it's over. Thanks for watching, guys. Click over here for previous videos. Check us out on Twitter over here. But as always, like the video if you liked it, comment below for fans with benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. I'll see you on this on the server uh, in the matchmaking. I'll, I'll see you on the web. I'll, watch out. Headshot.